something. See, I tell the story like this. When God created you, he released you from your mother's womb. We all came from a woman. Whether you know your mother or not, whether your mother stayed with you, regardless, you came from a woman. And when you came into this earth, you were released in the earth, and you had a cry. And if you didn't cry, the doctor spanked you until they had that cry because that cry had to come from your belly. Let me tell you the relevance of that cry. That was the cry to the universe that I am here. All right. And what has happened is that we live this earth and disappointments come and things come and it begins to separate us from that cry. And many of you find yourselves unhappy today because your cry is looking for you. Your cry is searching you out. Your cry is waving you down saying, find me, I'm here because I desire to reconnect with you. You see, when you reconnect with your cry, the cry that said, I am here, then you reconnect with purpose. And you understand why you are here. And see, one thing that I've realized that there's an identity problem. We don't know who we are. We forgot that we have come from forefathers and foremothers who were slaves and they pressed and they pushed and they did some things that when it seems like there was no light at the end of the tunnel, they continued to press. That's what we were made of in addition to being created in the image and likeness of an awesome God. You are an awesome person. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what you've done. There is still life in you. And because life is on the inside of you, you have an opportunity to be a life giver to somebody else. And when we begin to speak life one to another, when we begin to encourage one another, when we begin to love on each other, then we we be the change that we desire in this earth. What Dr. King wanted us to understand that there is a gift in you. That there is a gift of you. And because I am a woman of faith I have to, before I sit down, I have to tell this. In the book of 2 Kings, the 7th chapter, and it talks about a story. There was a famine in the land. And then there was a prophet of God that gave a word that said that, that we were getting, well, the people at that time, they were getting ready to come into um, some food and some different things, some resources that were going to come and take them from a, a place of famine to, yeah. to flourishing. So the prophet of God, he tells that, he, he makes that decree and that prophecy in the earth. And then the story fast forwards to four lepers, four lepers. And at that time, four lepers, they were unclean people. They came in the area. When they came on the scene, they had to say unclean, unclean. There was no good in them if we left society, left it up to society to identify them. But because God chose to use those four lepers to change the outcome and to create something awesome in that story, I want you to understand today that just how God used four lepers to bring flourishing to the land at that time, he can use you in whatever situation you are in. And because you are still here, you have opportunity to do great things. Those four lepers, I wasn't there, but I'm sure they looked at each other. They had a conversation. They looked at each other, death to death, no hope to no hope. They looked at each other, the ex-con, the the one who had been molested and raped, the one who could not keep a job, the one who had a child when they were 15, the one who had no education. They sat there amongst themselves, and they had this conversation, and they looked at their lives, and they said, Why sit here until we die? Either we stay right here and just dwindle away, or we get up with a glimmer of hope that when we put one foot in front of the other, that something awesome can come out of this situation. They had no idea that they were in purpose. Because even in that moment, God had used them in the moment they got up. Yeah. That prophecy followed them and they began to walk forward.